Well, you are. You're okay. Okay, but I will have to get out of this presentation to my Mentimeter. Ah, yes. With how you do it? You do it. Um... Is it escape? Uh, yeah, that's it. Escape, yeah. probably escape. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yep. Okay, yep. good. Yep, I got it. So you want and to get to the browser. Oh, okay, yep. great. Yeah, okay, here it is. Okay, good. All right. So now you can go back. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. And one more. Are you using the one? Oh, I see where you're going. Because I use the one on at the bottom there. Yeah. That's the one you're using to make it larger. No, 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 no. I'm just using this one. Um, this one, but I'm trying to move it. Okay, good. Let me up. Oh. I see you're fixing it. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to make it. Oh my God. What happened? Okay, got it. Okay. Um, if I don't, if I can't make it larger, I don't know why I can't make it larger. Oh, because it's at the bottom. You see the bottom there? Yep. Go, no, not there. Not there. The bottom of the slide. No, not there. Uh, yeah. Move it to the right. The mouse to the right. A little more. Not the left. The right. Yep. Yeah. At the bottom, the bottom right-hand side, there is a TV-like. Uh -huh. It's like uh -huh. a television. You click on that one. Aha, uh -huh, this one. Yeah. Yes, that's okay, it. I forgot. I completely forgot about it. Yep. Yeah, that's okay, it. good. I don't use Microsoft anymore. Sorry, but um, um, I, I still I, remember I, a little thank bit. Thank you. I have, to, I have to use it because it's uh, the one that was given to us by our school. What can yeah, I tell I know. you? Yeah. So, okay, um, so I'm going to introduce you. Is okay, right? thank you. Um, I can't get out though. All right, so welcome everyone. Welcome to day two and our presenter after our break, I hope you had a good break, is uh, Tamara uh, Jacek. Jacek. Jacek, who's coming to us from uh, Croatia, from Dejakovo. She's an experienced English and German teacher and a teacher advisor. She's been teaching both languages in the same secondary school for over 27 years. During the time, her teaching techniques have changed a lot thanks to her curiosity, motivation, and desire to learn. She's always eager to learn new ways of teaching, which she then uses in her classroom. As a teacher, she is well aware that you have to pick your own battles to win the war. During the COVID-19 pandemic, she has used learning platforms, Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom, and Edmodo to teach her students both English and German. And I'm just wondering how you don't confuse the two languages. <laughs> so um, welcome to Mara and welcome <laughs> everyone. <laughs> uh, hello and thank you. Uh, as Dr. Nelly said, um, I'm a secondary school teacher from uh, the eastern part of Croatia. Um, I, uh, I've been working for 28 years now, and I teach both English and German. But I have to tell you that uh, nowadays I teach mostly uh, English because less and less children want to learn German, which is quite, well, interesting. Because um, after they finish school, they want to move to Germany or Austria, where they are looking for work. And there they have to talk uh, German. So, as I said, I've been teaching um, mostly English now. But I, um, um, I've been teaching um, for these 28 years. Um, before I introduce you to my um, presentation, Teaching English as a Foreign Language to Special Needs, I would like to say that um, teaching English um, is easy, um, especially easy once you see what I do with my students. Uh, but uh, teaching English to special needs can be challenging. 
why challenging because uh, recently i don't mind uh, special needs so uh, i have to tell you that uh, but uh, recently we've had uh, students with special needs who have behavioral problems and we as educators i as someone who want, who wants to teach them english or german um, have problems um, more with their behavior and uh, not that much with uh, learning or uh, teaching them something. So before um, I move to uh, my presentation, I would like you uh, to tell me a little bit about your style or your methods of teaching. Um, I would like to... Uh, go to let me just see why i can't go to uh-huh okay i would like to ask you to go to www.menti.com and i would like you to use this code and to answer the question do i need to put this code in the chat box oh, sorry um, yes you could yes please yes Okay. It will help us. Okay, it will help you. Okay, so let me just see whether just I can copy and paste it. Yeah, I can just see whether I can. I see you had to go back to your. Oh, we can we can write. I'll write it down. It's okay. Go back okay. to the the large. Uh, okay. I Thank will write it down you. in the chat there. I hope I got yeah. it right. Seven seven zero oh, four eight eight nine, nine five, five. five. Yeah, I got it. Okay, now okay. I have to copy Thank it. You. Thank you. Tamara, can you make it large again? Yes, of course. Uh, but I would like to go to Mentimeter once you've finished um, answering the question. 7704. Oh, it didn't work. 7704. Um, 8955. Or I can put it here. Aha, you Some put it already. It's okay. Good. So it's uh, www.menti.com. Um, I don't know why it's not working. 7704-8955. Okay, let me just uh, quickly check. Um, how do I move? Uh -huh. How do I move this? Um, it says code 7704-8955. Maybe it's just for me. Maybe let me just else. see. Let me just see. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Okay, there is another one. Uh, could you... Please Just write it down. And I'll write it down, yes. Three, five, four, three, three, five, four, three. Five, eight, seven, five. Uh, Mentimeter, Mentimeter has this, um, I don't know, a funny kind of way. I um, um, made this survey, so to speak, two days ago. And if you don't use it, and they sometimes let this code, but I don't know why they changed it. Okay, so I hope that you can see that um, the, um, uh, the question was, how much has your teaching style changed over the years? And uh, there, are, there is one who said not a lot. There is uh, one who said or two quite a lot. I also put a little bit and I haven't paid any attention to my uh, teaching style. Um, so let's wait a bit. Let's see what is, uh-huh, okay. New code, okay, is already here. So is there anyone else who would maybe like to change? How much has your teaching style changed over the years? I have to tell you that my teaching style um, has changed quite a lot. Why? Uh, because um, the teaching methods have changed. Um, the students' books have changed. The, the students have changed. I have changed. Um, um, let's say maybe I heard something somewhere and I decided to impl implement this and that into my teaching style. So we can say that um, my my teaching style really has changed. Um, lucky you who <laughs> haven't changed your teaching style. Um, I have to tell you that uh, there are um, some of my colleagues 
who I know, um, who told me that they don't want to change their teaching style. And uh, they've been working for more than 30 years and their teaching style is always the same. Um, I know that, well, as I teach um, English, I know that I have to, um, let's say, change um, the ways that I teach. So let's go back to my presentation. Uh, so this is my survey. Um, and let's go uh, to university years. Now, um, well, I am now 51 years old, which means that I finished um, studying when I was 24, let's say. Uh, and we had excellent um, uh, teachers um, who, among um, other uh, subjects, taught us pedagogy, psychology, didactics. But they taught us that all the students are of equal knowledge, were of equal knowledge, no exception, no adjustment. The only piece of advice, so to speak, uh, that we were given was that we should go into the classroom and adapt to the class and then decide what to do to see how the class breathes and then to decide on the students' books, on the methods, on the level of knowledge and so on and so on. And then um, I started working. Uh, I had a lot of um, students in the classes, 30-something. Uh, they usually uh, came from two or three classes. Um, they were combined from two or three classes. So I, I would sometimes have 30, 35 students. And uh, there were students who were in the middle, of course, but there were also those who... Um, spoke, wrote um, English, um, read English as if it uh, were their mother. It was uh, their mother tongue. And there were also those who could hardly introduce themselves. Uh, nevertheless, I was taught, as I mentioned, at the university to see this class as a whole and then uh, to uh, address them uh, in the same way to present English as if it were uh, their mother language. Um, how I thought of uh, foreign, any foreign English, German uh, language then, I can briefly tell you. So you know that um, in those days, uh, students were interested in what was going on around them. Um, they would read books, comics, uh, they would um, um, watch the news, they would watch the films, the series. So I would get into the class, I would bring material, uh, ap apart from my students' books and my workbooks, I would bring um, my dictionaries or dictionaries from the libraries, uh, postcards, materials, um, um, uh, photographs, um, or maybe um, um, articles from magazines, from newspapers, and we would make an introduction. Um, I would maybe give them 10, 15 maximum words as a new vocabulary. Uh, we would read the text. We would translate just uh, the most difficult part of, parts of the text. We would answer the questions from the book, textbook. Um, maybe sometimes shorten the text, maybe sometimes, and that was all. So that was all. That was what we were taught at the university. So you should do that. Uh, what was the result or the consequences? There were always 10-ish students in every uh, classroom um, who were active out of 30, 35 in each class. Four or five students in each class would fail to understand me or to follow the material. And when I asked for help, um, other colleagues would say, ah, oh, they are simply lazy, ah, oh, they don't want to learn, ah, oh, they are not motivated, and so on and so on. Um, with years, I became frustrated, and my students as well. Why? Because many students were bound to fail the class. Um, by the end of the school year, I would have at least 
at least three students from each class who would um, have to go, so to speak, to, I don't know, is it the right term, to summer classes? So they would have to spend 10, 12, 15 hours of English, additional English, to try and to make up for all that they didn't learn or hadn't learned during the school year. But some of them would also fail classes. And as I said, I was frustrated. My students were frustrated. And when I asked for help, they would say, ah, oh, it's just the way it is. And then uh, there was this moment of clarity. Um, I don't know about uh, the rest of the, um, uh, uh, the rest of you, but um, here in Croatia, we have, uh, let's say, two or three annual meetings, state um, meetings that we should uh, attend, um, where we all meet from um, we English teachers, German teachers, and um, this is a state, uh, and there are also um, county um, um, summits official summits where uh, we also meet, discuss our problems, present our material uh, if we want. And the moment of clarity was when I attended such meeting at least 15 years ago. It's in Osijek near Jakob. It's maybe 40 minutes by car from Jakob. It's um, a larger city than Jakob. And one of our colleagues, one of uh, the English teachers, uh, showed us a different kind of way to teach students, not just special needs students, all students. Um, she, um, let's say, thought of us as our students, or we were presented as her students, and she was our teacher, and she presented one of her lessons. She gave us many materials, many exercises, um, many activities which we all enjoyed and after that i started doing the same so for the last 15 or so years i uh, have been um, doing the same that this um, colleague of mine had shown us and for me it's fantastic how um, I'm um, making my own materials and um, exercises and suddenly most of my students are becoming interested in the teaching material. Less or almost none uh, students get F grades. I have bigger control over the class. Um, I do better monitoring of the students' accomplishments. And I am more satisfied now, and I also have satisfied students. And by the end of the school year, most of my students feel happy because uh, they could accomplish something and get good or passing grades. So this is the result. Uh, but there is always a but, but. Um, by implementing this method, um, I as a teacher have to be um, involved a lot. I have to make all my materials, all my exercises, all the activities at home during my free time. And I also have to uh, get to school at least at least 40 um, minutes earlier every day to copy the material, to maybe cut the material out and so on and so on. Um, I do it all in my free time, which is not great, which is this but. Um, I also have to say that uh, now, after 15 or so years, I have a great library. And it's easier for me to do something which I'll show you, which I'm about to show you. But in the beginning, it was quite hard because um, instead of 
going for a walk with my children, I would say, okay, mommy has to work. Could you um, play a little bit with your doll or so and so and so? And could you just leave me until I finish this and that? Um, but now I, as I said, have a great library of my uh, exercises uh, for either um, text, uh, reading comprehension, listening comprehension, and for grammar as well. But as I said in the beginning, it was quite difficult. And now I also uh, do uh, similar uh, exercises, similar activities in some of the digital tools, which I like which means that my students can do um, these uh, exercises over and over again. Like, for example, I, um, I was doing a dictation um, a month ago. So I did, um, well, uh, thank you, Dr. Nelly, but um, I um, recorded myself with the words that uh, were supposed to be in the dictation and then placed or uh, pasted uh, the link uh, into the MS team uh, or into the, the team of my uh, class and told them, you can play this over and over and over again. Um, you can do it as long as you want. And this is going to help you. So digital tools are also going to help us with, um, with the teaching. But as I said, it, um, it is a great involvement of a teacher and my free time. So let me show you some of the um, examples of activities that I do, but these, these are just some. There are so many more activities. First of all, true or false. As you can see, I put here two different types of true or false exercises. Um, and you can see that I put, here it is, I put uh, the explanation what my students have to do in creation. Why in creation? With weaker students, I always put it in creation because in that way, I will not free, uh, be frequently asked, you have to, uh, what do I have to do here? Could you please repeat? Could you please repeat? Now you can read it yourself and you can see what you have to do. What can I do with these uh, types of activities? So you can see that um, in the first one on the left, uh, there are just five sentences. So if you see that your students are weaker, you can just give them, give, give them five sentences and, and you can see whether they have understood um, the text. You can ask them to read it. If they are shy, if they don't want to read it, you can ask, um, students with um, who are stronger, so to speak, to read it, to translate it, and then ask weaker students, could you now tell me whether this is true or false? Or you can give them 10 or 15 sentences um, and then grade it. So there are various forms what to do with true or false. Uh, on the right, there is this um, exercise where you have two sentences and then the students have to decide. Again, you can ask them either to read, to try and translate, to see what was wrong here and, and so on and so on. So this is one example. Another example is to match something. Again, you can ask them, uh, could you maybe uh, read it out loud? Could you translate it? Ah, you can't. Okay, then we'll ask someone else. So this, uh, here I refer to pick my own battles. So if he or she can't read it, okay, I'll ask someone else. If he says, oh, I wouldn't like to read or I'm not in the mood to read, okay, I'll pick my own battle and ask someone else. But if you cannot read, could you please try and match it? So here it is. You can see how easy it is. Then complete the text. This is really easy. and. Um, Again, um, I use this with uh, my students who are really, really weak because um, the text is uh, much longer. Uh, usually, um, we discuss the text, read the text. I give them a new vocabulary uh, before that. Then I have um, 
several um, activities next to the text. Uh, then we try to shorten the text all uh, together um, in a, a class. And then I use this shortened version of the text to um, omit some of the words, like I did here, five, just five, but I usually omit 10, 15, um, and then tell them, okay, now that we have done this text for so many times, could you try and complete the text with the words from the table or with the words from the text? Uh, or you can ask them to close their books and tell them, okay, could you now try and uh, remember which word goes here? Or you can give them two or three words that they don't need in this table. So there are so many different types of activities that you can do when you want uh, to, uh, for example, prepare students for uh, retelling the text. Um, an Odman out is fantastic for um, understanding the words. And this is something that my students like. I don't just ask them, could you just tell me, aha, uh -huh, Odman out, what um, uh, is wrong here, a village, a country, a week, a town? But I ask them, why is a week Odman out? Why? And then they explain, aha, uh -huh, a village, a country, a town. This is something where people live, where there are people. And week, uh -huh, week is something that we say, uh -huh, it's from Monday to Sunday, or they use some, some other explanation. Um, should I maybe uh, check the... Aha, uh -huh, okay. The text, maybe um, if you don't mind, I'll just... Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, maybe I can um, do it um, after um, the presentation because we still have enough time. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Ignore okay. us. We're just chatting away. We're just. <laughs> okay. uh, it, it, we're not really asking questions. We're just in our own worlds, listening to you and enjoying everything thank you okay good thank you okay uh, my next uh, um, activity is circle the correct word um, and you can uh, notice here that it's grammar so uh, before um, i do uh, any exercises i put a shorter version on the blackboard or on the whiteboard and you can see here, maybe I can put it uh, here. You can see how, um, um, let's see, easy this rule is. Then I, I explain, uh -huh. some and any are expressions of quantity. Mm -hmm. Okay, some is usually, remember this is English, so it's usually used in affirmative sentences, and then I put a plus, and any, is usually used in negative sentences and in questions. And then on purpose, I put this uh, two sentences. Can I have any or some milk? You have some and any sandwiches. And then they say, ah, but teacher, can you see that these both uh, sentences are questions? And should we put some or any? And then I tell them, mm -hmm. what's the way that you ask for milk? Is it, give me milk, or can I have, and then they say, some milk. So um, it's easier for them when you explain something, which is what I always do. I use very simple um, examples at first, and then I get them to the most difficult examples. That's the way, well, I do. Uh, then my next um, exercise is something that my students can't get right. And I know why. Because they don't know the word order in English. Um, I've tried different uh, methods. Um, they have to put the words in the correct order to get either the, uh, uh, the question or the negative sentence or an affirmative sentence. 
I tried to make the sentences shorter, as short as I can. I tried to underline uh, or bold words uh, that would um, be uh, the first in the sentence or put, um, um, I don't know, a question mark or a full stop or an exclamation mark next to the last word in the sentence. Nothing worked. So they would maybe start with something and then stop. So put the words in the correct order is something that I use from time to time, but don't use that often because my uh, students then get frustrated and say, I can't do it, and they simply leave it blank. Um, then translate the words. Can you see how easy these five words are? So with weaker classes, I put five words, 10 words, but words that we've practiced so many times. Uh, with stronger uh, classes, I um, ask them to, of course, I give them uh, words that will not be that easy. And I also uh, ask them sometimes to translate it from Croatian because it's always easier to translate from English to Croatian, but from Croatian to English, you have to think of the way how to uh, write the word. Uh, or I sometimes ask them to explain the word in English. And for example, if you um, have to think about the housework, what is the housework? So then this, then of course, I will have to grade everything, but then I will also uh, say, uh -huh, the housework is all the work that someone does at home, or the housework is someone that my mom does, or the housework is, and then when someone says it's uh, ironing, it's cooking, it's, so this will all be, um, something that they will get a, a point for it. And uh, my last activity uh, for this presentation is uh, word search. Um, I usually uh, use crossword puzzles, but with special needs students, it, um, you can't use um, cross uh, word puzzles because it's um, difficult for them to do it. But word search is something that my students with special needs adore. Uh, and I've noticed that usually students with special needs are uh, the first or the best at doing something like that. Um, I also use a word search when I want to do a dictation. And you can see there are 20 words here. Then I tell my students, uh -huh, so these 20 words are going to be in your dictation. So each time when they have to search for the word, they have to um, spell it. I don't know how many times. Uh -huh, dog, uh -huh, D-O-G or animal, A-N-I-M-A-L-S. Um, but I also have to tell you, uh, you know that um, a crossword can go in eight different directions. I don't always put it in eight directions. I put it in four, which is quite all right for them. And I've used these um, digital tools to um, make word search, which is quite all right for my students and they like it. As I mentioned previously, I paste uh, the link to um, my um, exercises that I do in uh, digital tools to MS Teams or Google Classroom. And then my students can do it over and over again. Uh, you know that sometimes you, you can make it more difficult or you, you can do it harder, you can do it easier. So I, I do it also in one class or during one lesson. Um, and um, I try to, let's say, adapt to the class, which means that if I see that my class is, so to speak, slow today, they don't want to do anything, then I'll make it easier for them because I don't want my students to get frustrated and I don't want to be frustrated. 
Um, but if I see that they want to do something, if I see that they are full of, let's say, um, great energy, then I will uh, make it uh, more difficult for them. Um, and what else? And I believe that this would be it. Um, I believe that this would be it, except that I would like you to do uh, the evalu evaluation form for me, please. Uh, I will put it in the I will put it in the chat. Um, and while you are doing it, so it's um, just very short. Um, while you are doing it, I believe that you can simply click on it and it will take you to Google Form. I hope. And while you are doing it, I would like to see um, what you wrote. I uh -huh, something. Some, I hope that it works. Uh -huh. Okay, let me see. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, Dr. Nelly said, I prefer to create my own material. I find it more engaging. Um, yes, I know. But um, recently I had two students from my um, classes who told me, um that um uh -huh, good i'm in the form great good who told me that they had um um they are bored they were bored during my classes that they um, hadn't learned anything new during my classes um and i was um i was sad i wasn't offended i was sad um because um, I really spend a lot of my time uh, searching for videos that I could engage uh, my students. Um, for example, um, on Monday and on Tuesday, I have classes um, and we are going to talk uh, about um, optical illusions. So I was searching this um, morning, I was searching for optical illusions. Um, on the internet. So I'm going to divide them into groups and each group is going to get one optical illusion. We are going to discuss it, uh, how it affected them and so on and so on. So I really spend a lot of my free time. Um, I will spend a lot of my free time doing um, material or searching for material um, for my students. And then when uh, two students say that they get bored during my classes and that uh, we haven't learned anything new during your classes. And they also mentioned, um, they also mentioned, whenever they ask me a question, I always tell them that it's stupid, which I have never done in my class. Never. Um, yeah, um, it's the same um, that uh, we all get fast and efficient after all those years. And as I said, I now have a, 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 a library um, with all my um, activities, uh, exercises. Um, I have ready-made material, which is great. And then I say, mm -hmm, what can I do today? Uh -huh. I have activity, this and that, and we can do it like that. Or um, you can maybe, uh, what I also recently started, I started asking my students to do activities during my classes, and then they have to send me the link, and then we do it together which is a double check and which they enjoy a lot. Uh -huh. um, yes, um, it's um, the true story. Yes, this is why we like a new um, headway. And I mentioned it to my students that um, uh, we as um, my colleagues and I uh, use a new headway because there are uh, so many true stories which we can then use online. For example, there are uh, students who have never heard of Oprah Winfrey. I understand it because they are 15 years old and Oprah Winfrey is, I don't know, 60 something. And um, she stopped um, presenting her um, series, I don't know how many, or TV show, 
maybe 10 years ago or so. And then I asked my students to Google it. And when they Google, they say, aha, Oprah Winfrey is really uh, a fantastic person, um, a humanitarian, and so on and so on. Um, start easy, get more difficult work well for students. Yes, that um, it, 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 uh, Lucy says. This is um, what I um, experienced as well. And um, I also forgot to mention that if I have um, uh, students um, who, um, if I have, let's say, um, students, mostly strong students with great knowledge um, in a class, and then I have two or three students which are um, included in the class, then I ask uh, these um, weaker students to do something as if I, if I for example, have uh, an exercise, true or false, with 10 questions. Then uh, first I ask stronger students to do something, and then I ask these um, uh, weaker students to do maybe something five or six or seven or uh, nine or 10. Special needs students are great at finding words, that's right. Uh, this is something that I noticed four or five years ago, and since then I've uh, been doing these uh, word search. Um, yes, um, I also use word search. I also use it when I want to introduce uh, new words. Um, just give them the crossword and then when they find this word, I explain its meaning. It can be like that, yes. Um, to learn Italian, good, okay. Uh, let me just see whether um, survey completed. Thank you all. Um, and I don't know whether you have uh, questions. I will now stop sharing because, um, okay, if you have any questions, I'm glad I can, I'm, I'll gladly answer it. You can unmute yourself, you know, yep. you can unmute yourselves. I, I allowed that before to ask questions. Uh, Tamara, when I say that I uh, create my own activities, I don't mean, um, you know, what you can find in a book. I mean that I create uh, things for them to create. I don't, um, I stopped the old uh, book way of teaching English um, way back when I started using technology because I find that a lot of students don't understand. And I, I learned this from um, one, one of my own kids when they learned uh, French, they don't really understand what the exercises mean. You know, they do an exercise, it's like a puzzle. So one of my children enjoyed the puzzle, you know, it's a puzzle and she likes puzzles. The other one says, mom, why are we doing this? Why don't we just speak? It's a language. I mean, am I gonna walk around in the world doing puzzles or doing these exercises, you know, put the, conjugate the verbs? I mean, what's the point of doing this? So, you know, they're different learners. So I realized that maybe language should be taught in a more, you know, um, I guess, active way where they feel, I mean, you, you give them the exercises, but they don't feel it. You know, first comes the, uh, the language, you know, when you talk to them, I only speak uh, English, you know, even to foreign language, I, I don't, uh, use any native because they don't know any I don't know their native languages anyways and um, to, to make sure that there isn't that kid in class and I have a lot of kids I have up to 40 there isn't that kid in class that you know is confused by the books is confused by the exercises mm -hmm. so I became very very um, I guess I don't know what to call it sensitive mm -hmm. To, to kids and when you mentioned the comments I get a lot of comments like that and of course you know when I was a young teacher I used to get hurt then I realized that they're not really telling you the truth because notice what the student said and these are 15 year olds right the, from the age of 12 to the age of I guess 15 16 they like to say things they like to see your reactions <laughs> you know you're like their parents they're you know so they play around with with um, their teachers um, their female teachers specifically, not so much with their male teachers at this age. First of all, she said, she said three things. She said bored, but before she said that, she said, you insulted her. 
which you never did. So you should realize that if she says one lie, what, why would you think that the other information about it being boring was a lie? It wasn't a lie. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She's just, she just said that. It's just to get, you know, and, and these kids, uh, when you talk to them, if you sit and talk with her, you'll find out that she really wants your attention. She wants, she wants you to, to be with her, to, to be mm-hmm. a friend, you know, and, and she just brings up the, this nonsense just mm-hmm. to, because she doesn't know how to communicate, you know? So mm-hmm. um, you learn, you learn from their reactions, but first we take it and we say, well, I, I did all this work and, and you're criticizing me. I worked so hard and you don't even appreciate, like, you know, we feel like, uh, you know, um, our mm-hmm. ego has been hurt, but that's not what it's about. Um, I believe that it's um, a different system in Croatia because um, there's no way to punish I know. students. Um, for example, if I give them something, I rarely give them homework. Why not? Because they will simply copy it from their friend. And if I say, but uh, it's the same as your, especially now in this online teaching, uh, there's no way to punish them. Uh, but as you mentioned, uh, I also started thinking about the ways to get them interested. So with uh, stronger classes, I, for example, start. I have started using Padlet a lot. Um, I asked them, well, we do a text of some kind or grammar. And then I asked them, uh-huh, you're now in groups, you are now in groups, and you are going to have to do this and this and that. Um, and then they will get graded for this, which is good, but I can't do it with all my classes, which is awful. And as I mentioned, there's no way to punish them. So you no, know, but it's the same everywhere. You can't punish. I mean, that that's how it is. That's the system. That's I mean, that's what teachers are. They're, they're supposed to um, uh, keep the law, keep order, but they can't do anything. In other words, they don't have any tools or anything. They they, and you know if if. But, but you don't need it, you know? If, if you step back and you think of each step, that's what I try to do, think of each one of your students and there are a lot of bitchy ones, especially <laughs> during the months. I mean, they, they can get very emotional. It's, it's a very difficult age, you know? So they could say things or scream. I've had students screaming and yelling and, you know, I just look at them and smile. I mean, there are different techniques uh, to get to them, but it's a hard age. Teen, Teens is a very hard, you know, they're very emotional and, and they've got lots of problems. So um, you kind of have to see them as your own children and think, how would you treat your own child? Yes, would you but, punish uh, them? Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, I've, um, I've noticed that um, uh, now I have in one class, I have a um, um, hyper hyperactive student, but I don't think that he is hyperactive. <laughs> he is simply um, searching for attention. And um, I don't, of course, um, I talk to him. I don't want to, um, I sometimes pretend that I don't hear him because it's the best method. But, but you know, I also have um, days when I can cope and when I cannot cope and sometimes I just tell him could you please go to the pedagogue and he goes there and after 10 minutes he returns and he's at peace which means that um he needs time out maybe 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 I should ask him to go out and take a walk but I'm not allowed to do I know, that. I know, I know, I know, I know. School is so complicated. Uh, yes, we were all there. Can I, can yes, I say go something? ahead, please. Let, can I turn on the, the, is it okay if the video's on? Uh, oh. I'm not looking well, my only best. only if you want to, only if you want. I'll give <laughs> you the option. I'm not looking my you, best. No, you can decide. I don't know decide. what my hair looks like. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay. That's why I have short <laughs> okay. hairs. I don't have to worry. <laughs> um. Yes, I was going to say about these hyperactive or uh, kids that I have some this year and uh, what we do is we do sometimes go for a walk. We leave the class and go for a walk. Are you allowed to? Yes, 
Yes, wow. here in Italy, because there is the main class teacher doing the subject of that lesson. And then there's the special needs teacher alongside them. Oh, and oh, so obviously the teacher remains in class and yeah. the special needs teacher gets to go out for a walk around the school and That's calm, great. calm spirits down. That's, That's very great. helpful. But what do you do if you're the only teacher with, you know, 30 kids or 35 and you have five, usually, right? There are about five kids in the classroom that decide to have a party. For yes, you. I don't know what you do then. I, I, yeah. I, I would like to know. I would like to know what to do. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's very, it's very difficult. Hello. Hi, yeah. this is Maria. <laughs> Maria. Hello. You can open your, your camera if okay. you wish. If only a few. Okay, I will. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm I don't know. I'm about to um appear. Can you see me? I can't see my okay. Yeah. There, there I am. Hello. Can you see me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Probably. Okay. I'm going to um, you're going to sing a song. Okay, my connection is a little unstable today. Um, well, as you might very well know, I'm a yoga teacher, instructor, actually. And I've tried yoga, or just call it physical exercises and breathing uh, deeply. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, And they love that like to make a pause and say okay now we're all going to do yoga even if it isn't really but okay, to use so the word yoga i would say we're going to do some exercise like i don't know if yoga is the right word for a lot of these kids how old are well, they? they they're, they're quite aware also of high school, uh, high, school. High, school. Yeah. high school but even even kids even kids love it so I st we stand up and say, okay, I we, let's raise our arms deep, uh, inhale deeply. And we remain with our arms up and we breathe one, two. And so you've taken them out of their, I mean, you've, first of all, you've surprised them. You've taken them by surprise. Like, okay, what are we going to do? So you've got their attention engaged. Okay, so at least just for, a, um, a giggle to I mean at you that you might look a little loony uh, <laughs> it's uh you've taken them out of the um of the, the war zone <laughs> they have driven you or uh, uh of, or uh, thrust you into uh, no surprises are into. great so uh I think Absolutely. surprises are great. What I usually do is I get them to stand. The minute I get upset in class, this I've been doing this for years. When I get upset, nobody's going to see it, right? But when I get upset inside, for some reason, I say, okay, everybody, let's stand up. That's how I get rid of my frustrations. <laughs> and then they all stand up and I, and I do some crazy things with them. <laughs> Raise your hands, try to reach up to this, something crazy. And they love it. Like, just like Maria said. It works. Mm -hmm. Try it and tell us how it goes. I will definitely try it. But I have to say, I will have to ask my colleagues what they will think about it. Because you know, what do you mean? You know, um, um, uh, uh, there are always uh, students who will always talk and they, they will say, oh, you know what we did, crazy stuff. Um, really? So what, to stand up and, and stretch, you know, like, yeah, really? I do whatever I want. That's the I only thing it. I enjoy. I will try it. I will definitely try it. All right. We're going to have to end because okay. time. Thank you. And we've Thank got, you. So we'll see you in the next session. Thank you, Maria. We can continue this. The next session is going to be a